another GCSE Economics video with me, Mr. Goff, for MrGoff.com. Today's video will focus on the determination of wages through the market forces of supply and demand. Like with prices, wage rates will always trend towards equilibrium. The equilibrium wage rate is where the supply of labour by households, that is the number of people willing to work for that specific wage, exactly matches the demand from firms for labour at that particular wage. The supply of labour comes from what is known as the active labour market. This means all those people that are willing and able to work at current wage rates. This means it doesn't include groups like students, pensioners and the long-term ill. Demand comes from those firms that require workers. There are a number of factors that can affect supply in the labour market. We're going to take a look at each of them in detail, but first, let's take a look at what happens when there's a left shift or a right shift of supply in the labour market. A left shift of supply leads to higher equilibrium wages, but a lower number of people employed. Whereas a right shift of supply leads to lower equilibrium wages, but more people being employed. If wage rates go up, then some people that weren't prepared to supply their labour at all may now think that it's worth supplying their labour, and other people may be more willing to do things like overtime or extra shifts because the wage rate is higher. Both of these things contribute to a right shift of supply. On the other hand, if the wage rate were to go down, then the opposite would happen with people less willing to take extra shifts and less people willing to supply their labour at the current prices. If workers are able to get paid at overtime rates or earn performance bonuses, then more workers will be willing to put in more time, leading to an overall right shift in supply. If the size of the workforce in a country grows, then there will be a right shift of supply. If it shrinks, there will be a left shift of supply. The main factors that affect this are the difference between the number of people entering the workforce at working age and the number of people leaving at retirement age, as well as net migration to the country. Non-monetary factors like working conditions, opportunities for promotion and job security also influence the number of people willing to supply their labour. In recent times, flexible working and working from home has allowed a number of people who would have otherwise thought that a regular job could not fit around their other commitments to enter the workforce. This has led to a right shift in supply of labour. The general level of education and the number of qualifications people obtain in a country will greatly affect the supply of skilled labour within that country. There are also a number of factors that can affect demand in the labour market. But let's start again by having a look at what happens in the labour market when we have a left shift or a right shift of demand. A left shift of demand leads to lower equilibrium wages and less people employed while a right shift of demand leads to higher equilibrium wages and more people employed. For firms, when the wage rate increases, the efficiency of using labour decreases and there'll be a left shift of demand. When a new industry is experiencing growth, there will be a right shift of demand for workers in that industry. At the same time, declining industries will see a left shift of demand for workers. When the economy is going strong, then there will be additional demand and firms will wish to produce extra output to meet that demand. This will lead to a right shift in the demand for workers to produce that output. When the economy is in recession, less goods need to be produced and there will therefore be a left shift of demand for the workers to produce those goods. When wages rise at a slower rate than inflation, there is a fall in real wages. This means in real terms, the efficiency of using labour has gone up and there will be a right shift of demand for labour. When the labour force is better educated and therefore more productive, it is more efficient to use labour. Therefore, there will be a right shift of demand for labour. And finally, when firms are making a lot of profit, they're likely to reinvest that so that they can grow their business. As they grow, they require more workers. So high profitability leads to a right shift of demand for workers. Supply and demand can also help to explain the difference in wages that different people see. If we look at the point W1Q1, this represents high paying jobs like CEOs. 
These require more skills and experience. There are therefore fewer roles and fewer applicants. This means that demand and supply are both less elastic. This leads to higher wages and less people employed. When it comes to low paying jobs, less skill and experience is required. There's more different roles and more applicants to go for them. So both supply and demand are more elastic and we get a much lower wage with many more people employed at it. That brings us to the end of this video on the determination of wages. Join me again soon when I'll be looking at gross and net pay. Try the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise the economics. And until next time, it's bye for now.